Hi, Joe here from Shutterspeak Photography. Very nice to see your smiling face again here on YouTube. So today I'd like to talk to you about some advanced techniques for editing your HDR images. So when you create an HDR or high dynamic range image, basically what we're doing is we're taking all of the dynamic range, the differences in the the highlights and the shadows, and we're blending them together into one very nicely, evenly exposed image that, that would have been beyond the range of what the camera was capable of capturing, right, on its own. But one of the side effects of using HDR software is it creates a very even, flat image. And sometimes that flat image lacks a focal point. So we're going to take a look at what we can do to take an average photo that's just a, a nice picture and and very evenly toned picture and what we can do to to kind of add some pop to it so hey let's take a look and see what we can do okay so I'm in Lightroom but it doesn't matter you could be in Neo or Lightroom either way no difference but I've selected three photos from a sunset down at the beach uh, in Lightroom here and I'm going to send them over to Luminar Neo to be merged together as an NHDR. So I have here the normal exposure, the two-stop underexposed, and the two-stop overexposed image here. And I just gotta right-click on any of them, say export, and then go on over here to HDR merge in Luminar Neo. Now these were taken on a tripod, so I'm gonna skip some of the stuff like image alignment and chromatic aberration. Uh, I will use ghost reduction though because these pictures, of course, have the tide that's coming in and out, so there is some motion in the water. So we're going to say ghost reduction, yes. And like I said, they're on a tripod, so I'm not going to worry about auto alignment. Each one of these that you check off, you know, adds a little bit of time to the processing. So if you absolutely don't need it, don't use it. All right, so let's see what we get. Okay, so it's generated a nice HDR for us. And one thing that you should kind of take a look at is notice how this picture is very evenly toned. It's very kind of flat all the way across all the colors, the highlights, the shadows are all fairly close to even. Obviously, it's a little brighter here in the center, a little darker off in these corners, but not tremendously. And, and so one of, this, one of the things that this photo lacks is really a place to look. What are we looking at? Well, I guess we're looking at the sun, right? But we really want to kind of lead the eye in the HDR. And, and the first thing that you're going to look at is going to be the brightest part of the image. So whatever the brightest part is, that's where we're going to look. And it's definitely the sun, but we can help this photo out quite a bit by kind of uh, creating some highlights and some shadows that are going to lead the eye right down the center of the picture. So, hey, first things first, let's take a look at maybe applying a preset. And generally uh, for these kind of beachy ones, I always like generally one of these. Uh, sometimes they're a little bit much, but you know, hey, you gotta pick whatever one's gonna work best for you. And uh, you know, well, let's see. I'm going to go with, I think, the long exposure, and then we're just going to dial it back quite a bit, though. Yeah, somewhere maybe around there or so, 40. That looks good. And now we're going to go over to the Edit tab. And now we're going to really start to try and work on this image and give us a kind of a place to look. So first thing I like to do is I'm definitely going to go with Accent AI and pull that up and that looks good. We're at somewhere around 24, 25. Yeah, I'm kind of liking that. And definitely Sky Enhance. So let's pull that up and, you know, one of the things you can do with these tools are you can always go all the way up to 100 and then dial them back to a point where you like it. And I'm liking it somewhere around, somewhere around there, 45, 46, that looks good. Okay, so now from here, I'm gonna go over to Essentials. And I'm actually, I'm, I'm sorry, not, I clicked on Extensions, uh, accidentally, ex Essentials, there we go. And I'm gonna go over to the uh, Erase tab because I wanna get rid of this 
dust spot here, although I think that we're probably going to crop, crop this, but let's remove that dust spot. So we'll let the AI work its magic. And we could, of course, just clone this out as well. But hey, I mean, we have dust spot removal, so why not let the AI do its thing? Okay, so that is now gone. And I definitely want to add in maybe a little bit of structure there, not a tremendous amount. Boost that a little bit. And let's take a look at our colors. I'm going to probably desaturate a touch because I feel like the oranges are a little bit too much. So desaturate a little bit. And let's look at details. I'm going to skip for now. Um, Dehaze is going to bring in some darks into the clouds. Maybe a little bit of that. Golden hour we got to be careful with because we're already pretty heavy on the yellows. And now, so now we're really kind of getting ready to go into kind of like the next step here. And the next step is going to be, I, I think we need to crop this image because all of this sky up at the top here is kind of a waste. So let's let Composition AI do its thing. I generally tend not to agree with Composition AI. And in this case, I don't agree with it. I think the sky is kind of the boring part of this image. I think I'd like to do a... 16 by 9 and let's try composition AI with 16 by 9 uh, even still no it's it's picking out the sky I'm, I'm not a not a fan of it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it down here and I'm gonna pull this out a little bit and maybe back somewhere around there or so and down and I'm gonna get rid of a bunch of that sky yeah, I kind of like it like somewhere right around there, I think. Or, you know, putting the sun off to the side here is actually kind of nice as well. All right, so I'm going to apply that crop. And now we're going to start to kind of draw the eye in. So what we want to do here is we're going to go to dodge and burn. And we're going to do a couple of dodge and burns here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lighten. And I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger bigger brush and I'm gonna kind of make a, a nice little section right, right here and you can see it's already there naturally but I'm just gonna kind of enhance that a little bit and yeah I know, I know it, it's a lot but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna dial it back so I did it at 100 and we can just kind of dial it down maybe somewhere around there right so maybe a little bit more Let's go for uh, 39. All right, so that's what it looked like before and after. So you can see we just added a little bit of highlight right down the center there by the sun. Actually, I might give it a little bit more. Bring it in a little bit more this way. Okay, so so I'm kind of liking that. So before after, let's take a look. And now we're already starting to lead the eye a little bit. We can even kind of angle it out a little bit. All right, so see how we're kind of leading in and it might be a little too dark there maybe a little bit less let's bring it down a little bit oops dodge and burn come back okay so now what I want to do is we're gonna darken some stuff now oh you know what you know we're gonna do it we're gonna make another layer so I'm gonna click off the tool and I'm gonna click back in we're gonna make another layer and we're gonna lighten a little bit more so what I want to do is I'm gonna take some of these areas here where it's naturally a little bit brighter and just kind of brighten that up a little bit. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Some of these little caps in here, some of the foam, some of that. And just keep in mind, all of this is gonna get dialed back. So I know it looks pretty bright right now, but we're just giving it a little bit more depth and dimension. On top of these rocks here where the sun is naturally hitting the tops of the rocks. I'll look at this all in here. We definitely want to brighten that. And we're going to give it a little bit, just a little bit more dimension. Okay. Over here a little bit. Now let's start dropping this way, way back. So we're going to maybe give it a 20%. 
So that's the way it was before and now after. It's just a little bit more depth to things. And if there are spots where you don't like, I make I maybe I went a little too much over here. I can erase that and cut that back a little bit. Maybe a little bit too much out here. But other than that, that's looking good. So, all right. Now we're going to do a little bit of burn and we're going to darken some stuff. So what I want to do now is I'm just going to take like the backs of these rocks, things like that, and make this a little smaller. Just give a little bit more dimension to things out here. We see how it's naturally dark back there. Some of the dark areas here. Out in here. Out there. here a little bit yes I know it's dark I know be patient all right so now we're gonna scale this way back maybe about 15 16 percent or so and let's just take a look and same thing if I went a little heavy-handed I can just go and erase a little bit here and there That's kind of the beauty of just doing this with a wider brush. If it's too wide, you just go back in and cut it off. All right, so so that's not bad. I'm not unhappy with that. Maybe a little too much right in the front right there. All right, so now next thing is I really want to funnel the look into the center. So I want to funnel the viewer's eyes right into that bright center spot. So I can't do that with vignette because the vignette tool really only has the circle option. So if even if I choose the subject and I put the subject over here, right, and we do that, I mean, it works, right, but it's a circle. And I don't really want a circle for this image. I kind of want to just bring in the sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the Develop tab, and I'm going to go, say, Masking, and I'm going to use a linear gradient, and I'm going to angle it this way. So that way we're angling both of them. And now I'm going to add another one and we'll do it this way. So we're kind of almost creating like a V right around the image. And now what we can do now is just kind of play with the exposure, right? And see how we bring that down and we got to bring it down much, even just that much kind of funnels us right into the center of this image. So let's take a look at all the changes that we've done. So let, let's look at where we started. That's a pretty flat image. It's a nice image. It's fine. Nothing wrong with it, but it's flat. And now look how we kind of just by darkening up these edges here, we kind of just funnel the viewer's eyes right down the center of this image, right into the sun. So I think that you know, just by doing a little bit of work on this image, we really made a significant difference to it. Um, you know, we could play around with the cropping a little bit, but this is one of the downsides to HDR. I mean, we get great exposures, but they're flat exposures, and we need to do things like this, dodging and burning, and playing around with vignetting to draw in the user to a spot where we want them to look within the photo. Okay, I hope you found that helpful. I hope that you learned a technique that's gonna help bring out the best in your HDR photos. So, hey, if anything in this video helps you out, please help me out by hitting like, subscribe, and by all means, leave me a comment. Let me know your questions, your thoughts, and your concerns, or just say hello, because I love hearing from you guys, and I do answer most of the people that comment on this channel. So, I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Hey. Thanks for watching and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.